Hi, Kate here. So I just wanted to chat to you a little bit about anxiety. I've been reflecting this week um, on our interactions with one another, our kids and people online. There's uh, been new waves, I suppose, of anxiety that are occurring at the moment that threaten to destroy our happiness and hopefulness. So I wanted to just talk a little bit about it. Um, so currently there's a lot of stra uh, triggers that are um, increasing our anxiety. There are um, really you know, valid concerns about lockdowns that have been extended for months on end in New South and Vic. Um, there's concerns about the short and long term impacts of those lockdowns for families and children. And now we're really experiencing fresh anxiety about returning to school and work and how our kids are going to cope with yet another um, change. And also the real anxiety about contracting COVID. Um, and as our cases are increasing around us, particularly in Victoria, um, and what that means for our young children and our unvaccinated community members and how to keep them safe. There's also anxiety around the tension between some of the divisions that are happening um, in society at the moment, those who are supporting um, and supportive of the vaccination and those who are upset about the mandates and the rules and, and other um, you know, impacts that have um, happened because of the lockdowns and, and COVID. So there were, and there are also um, other things I'm sure, um, you know, for each individual and each personal sort of family um, that already have worries and concerns about what might be causing their anxiety. So it can seem kind of never ending at the moment. I know I've talked uh, probably previously about the effects of anxiety on our brain and behavior, um, but it's really important at this time to remember that the different responses some people get, you know, when they're feeling anxious. So some withdraw um, and some get more reactive and defensive. Um, but it's all because we're feeling uncertain and it's all because we're feeling uh, a bit of out, of out of control. So, you know, often we try to get back control. Sometimes we do that in not so positive ways. Sometimes it's about pushing those negative feelings onto others um, and that can help us feel a bit more in control. But it's usually only momentarily and spreading those kinds of negative feelings are fairly destructive for others as well as for ourselves. So life from two years ago can seem like a distant past and it can see, feel really easy to want to wind back the clock to simpler times before COVID. Um, and some of us just be like, I just want to pretend it's not here and I want to put my head in the sand and um, pretend it's not even here. Uh, unfortunately, that won't be an effective tool for any period of length of time, but I can understand the temptation to do that. So what are we going to do? What is the antidote to all this anxiety? How do we help our kids? How do we help ourselves to be grounded when it's normal and natural to be in a heightened state considering what's going on around us? So one approach that I've been uh, playing around with and really been trying to focus particularly for me and my family this week um, has been thinking about how do I increase kindness and how do I increase playfulness um, and a way to lighten the energy um, that's that's around me and around my the people that I care about. So firstly, how we can do this is adults is try to be a bit kinder to ourselves. So this is by acknowledging that things are really tough. You're not expected to have it all together and you're not expected to be all knowing and all wise about how this is going to turn out. But practically being kind to yourself might be really taking extra time to nurture yourself through self-care activities, noticing your self-talk and catching it if it gets really critical, letting perfection and maybe high achievement go and just being compassionate that you are doing the best that you possibly can. So think of doing something nice for yourself. Think of taking some time for yourself. And that can be to read a book, put on some favourite music, cook a favourite meal, or get someone to cook a favourite meal for you, um, light a candle, call a friend, do some mindfulness, um, do some art, creativity, have a bath, have a long shower, whatever it is. But be kind to yourself. The other thing we can do is practice doing some kindness for other people as well, which is amazing because it has a twofold effect. When we be kind to um, those near us and away from us, especially online, it's really helpful for them, but it's also incredibly helpful for us. When we spread kindness, whether it's through words, random acts of kindness, compliments, hugs, smiles, it's really joyful and warmth um, and pleasurable for other people, but it feels incredibly good for ourselves as well. So that's a really good space to be um, functioning from. 
And the third way we can practice kindness as an antidote to all this anxiety is by investing that kindness specifically towards our families and our kids. So find ways to pay extra special attention to each person in your home, even if it's just a moment, even if it's just a sentence, something like, I really love spending some time with you or, you know, how are you going or how are your worries or, you know, what, what's, what's going through your mind, you know, or asking about what they're hoping for or what are they dreaming of at the moment. So this week in my family, we've made an effort to kind of laugh and connect and we've been bringing out the board games again, which is great. We've been visiting old photos from childhood and past holidays and also um, thinking about the future in a positive way by going where we're going to go when we can travel again and, and getting ideas going. These have been a really good way of shifting away from the negative and anxious energy and, and all the news that's been happening um, and it lifts our spirits and makes us feel kind of connected um, at the end of the day, which is really nice. So anxiety is not something we can just get rid of. It's a normal function when we're under threat. And most of us have been experiencing long periods of threat um, to ourselves through various different forms for an extended period of time. So, you know, making that transition back to, you know, normal, COVID normal, whatever that might be with workplaces and schools opening up, you know, that actually increases some of those risks that we're experiencing, but it also might be reducing others, you know, and by that social connection again. So finding ways to relax so that our bodies and minds are not always consumed, not always on edge and not always vigilant is very important for our mental health and well-being and for that of our kids. So no matter what's going on around you right now, there are things that you can control, which includes your activities, your thoughts, the use of your words towards yourself and one another. So you get to choose that now. You get to choose to bring moments that bring joy. You get to you know, create more connection within your family. And, and that is incredibly important for the health and well-being of your kids. So focus on kindness as an antidote. Focus on playfulness. And that'll help generate hopefulness one moment at a time. So I hope that's been useful. And I will talk to you again soon.